What's up guys, Phoenix here, and in today's video I'm going to be giving you guys a deck profile of a deck that I haven't really touched on in a long time, and that deck is going to be Gustos. Now, I touched on this a little bit in last year, you know, with the whole Tempest Gusto craze sort of thing that was happening, because that was truly, like, a deck I really enjoyed playing, but if you count that out of the picture, being, you know, not really a quote-unquote pure Gusto deck, I haven't done anything Gusto related in over a year, since November, I believe, of 2012 when I played a pure Gusto deck at that one regional and just, you know, got tired of the day. But that aside, like, I've just been having a lot of fun testing with this deck since Pirica has been entered into the picture on my online testing ground. But also, since, you know, we're not getting Pirica for a while, I've just been dabbling around in some old concepts that now that the format has slowed back down quite a bit may or may not actually be viable. I've had a lot of good testing ground with this deck so far, almost to the point where I'm almost willing to play this deck at the ARG Open Series in Charlotte this coming weekend that I'm going to. Um, whether or not I end up playing it, that is, uh, that is yet to be determined. Um, and if you're wondering why, I do have DT copies of this, but if you're wondering why this is Hidden Arsenal, it's because they're all German, and German DT or foreign DT in general doesn't exist, and I wanted uh, German copies of it because, personally, I just like the extra ink that's on the foreign cards. But anyway, I'm going to get into the deck. I just extremely streamlined everything down to a point where it just flows very well, and I can almost compare it on, you know, a functional access to, like, Fire Fist in the meta. Like, it just reliably does what it needs to do, and you're just going to be plussing every turn while walling it behind traps. But anyway, for the deck list, uh, two cam Serenity of Gustos, and yeah, it's just two cam. It just allows your engine to be infinite. It's a level four wind psychic, so it has you know just plays to let you go into your level sevens um, with Goldos and things like that. Or you know you can if you want to you can overlay them into Chidori or something. Um, you only need two because once you get one in, you start infinitely recycling it. Plus, you have things like Freeze and Contact with Gusto to, you know, figure into, and Goldos. So, it's just, it's alright. Um, three, Gusto Goldos. He's the best recruiter because he only misses timing off Tribute and Synchro Summoning, but it's whenever he's sent to the grave. So, you can Torrential with him set. Um, he can get Dark Hold, he can get Bear Popped, still get his effect. And that is something I really like. When you're playing against Fire Fist, you basically have to have Goldo set at almost any given time, or on field at any given time, because that riddles out, that rules out the bear possibility. But other than that, the deck is pretty alright to pilot in that matchup. Uh, two windows. I swear, if I could get away without with not running this bitch, I would. But unfortunately, she is a little bit too necessar necessary for, uh, for the infinity of the recruiter loop. So, unfortunately, one isn't enough, and three is way too goddamn many. Um, so, I just run two. I mean, she, she's alright in terms of attack, because you can just poke for a thousand. But other than that, it's just, you kind of have to entice your opponent to attack her, and I really am not a, uh, a particularly big fan of that. Um, three, Gusto Eagles. He just gets you into your cam. In a few months, you will be able to summon Pitaka from the deck, um, and things along that nature. Just being able to get the cam out of the deck, or just continue with your recruiter loop, it's very good. The fact that he's a one-star tuner, also very good, because he can make, you know, Mispert Colossalus with a, with a Kamoi play, or something like that. Or you can normal summon him with a cam out, and go into your fives. He just, or you can normal summon it with a Goldos, and go into your threes. Um, things along that nature are what make it very good. Uh, something that I don't think I touched on, but I really like about these, is that in German, their names are predominantly untouched. Gusto is still Gusto in German, and all of their names, like Eagle, Goldo, Winda, Cams, Freeze, Goldos, um, Kamoi, all that, it's all the same. It's just the words in between and the text boxes that are different. Um, so I really like that. Like, for example, uh, Triple Kamoi. Hoffnung von Gusto. <laughs> but, yeah. Triple Kamoi, because Kamoi is a very, very crucial aspect to the deck. Being an extra copy of Eagle and Goldo is very important. Also, the fact that 
when your opponent starts figuring out that when your you know stuff gets destroyed by battle is when all your effects will start going off and how you gain advantage many people stop attacking that even right now not many people will attack set monsters even if it's just game one so you either punish your opponent for not attacking you by flipping it and just going straight into a level five or getting your recruiter out or if they do attack you it's just an extra copy of uh, your recruiters because you can just get out eagle or goldo depending on what your situation holds um, because you have to be very proactive with knowing how many hits you're going to take from certain battles to end, you know, your field with whatever you want on it for the next turn, like if you wanted to end with a cam or whatever. But that is all the Gustos in the deck. Uh, that is 13. It's a 13 card Gusto engine. The last three monsters are 2 card card D. Uh, you just, you really want to get into large hand sizes. Um, there's a lot of points during the game where you are just passing your turn. Um, because you're just sitting behind recruiters until you gain enough advantage to just go off. And card card D gives you good things to do during that turn because a lot of those turns could be deemed as irrelevant if you're just drawing, setting some traps, and passing. But card car allows you to just, you know, get extra advantage out of it. And the last monster is one Thunder King. Um, I was playing a Debris Dragon. Just for, you know, the access to bringing back your Goldo, your Eagle, or your Kamoi and going into a level 6 or your Goldo and Eagle and doing something with, like, a cam that already exists on the field, but Thunder King is just a solid one of monster. It's just it's the only real standalone card in the deck, um, other than you know the recruit. All the recruiters are standalone cards, but they don't really do anything. This one just kind of just puts pressure on your opponent, whereas the other ones just make it where you can't lose and you'll gain infinite advantage. You'll gain infinite adva advantage if I can speak correctly. But that's all the monsters. That's sixteen monsters for the spells. We have uh, two. Contact with Gustos or Contact mit Gusto. Um, my German, I do not think, is anywhere near accurate. But anyway, two Contact with Gustos. It's just really good for recycling things back. Um, your graveyard can get fairly loaded fairly quickly. Um, and you can't always fall back on cam. And a lot of times you just need that pinpoint removal. So this is just really good. Um, double Pot of Duality for searching and whatnot. And triple upstart goblin to make the deck 37 cards effectively. Um, and basically, just with the two duality, two, uh, the three upstarts, and the two card cards, you're just trying to power into all of your things like traps and kamoys, um, because that's really what's important about the deck. Uh, triple copies of space, you can't really risk anything to chance with this. Like, you really have to be able to just go in when you need to go in. Um, also, you know, Spacing 10 Key is great because Bear does not do kind things to this deck. And then the last spell is One Book of Moon. Um, I don't like Dark Hole in this. I don't like Dark Hole in anything right now. Um, if anything, you could side Dark Hole in this, but I'm not particularly sure if I'd like that either because there's a lot of times that you are just walled up behind like three different recruiters and only one of them would be like Goldo. And you have plenty of removal with the contacts and like Regeki Break and things like that. Plus, clearing your opponent's board is never really that efficient because you could probably just make freeze and OTK them. Things like that. But anyway, so that was the spells. Let's see, there's 13 traps and there's 16 monsters, so that was 11 spells. Math, right? For the 13 aforementioned traps, three copies of Fiendish Chain, you need to stop bears, you need to stop anything that's going to just destroy your things before they trigger, you need to stop Abyss Dwellers, you need to stop a lot of things, and this helps you. Uh, double Call of the Haunted. Um, in most pure Gusto decks up until this point, like you would have seen from me, I'd be running things like Junk Synchron. Junk Synchron is a very questionable card, and it's very it's not as good as it should be, and it definitely needs to be better. Um, Call of the Haunted is just that card that it lets you recycle your your uh, cams that are engraved and get extra advantage. It lets you set up more Synchro plays and all that nonsense. It just gives you much more utility than the Junk Synchrons ever would. And the fact that, you know, if you chain it to MST and you have a Goldo Engrave, you just get some advantage that way as well. Um, things of that nature are what make me prefer this card over Junk Synchron in this build because it just makes it more streamlined. And it allows me to do things like make my Freeze OTKs go a little bit further. Things of that nature. Uh, two copies of Vanity's Emptiness. I want to uh, simplify the game state until I get things moving and I mean yes it conflicts with the recruiters a little bit but not necessarily because as soon as they summon something that's big enough to kill one of the recruiters this will go with it and I'll still get my uh, summon out so it's uh, it's not necessarily that bad it's just something that you do 
And then once you've like established like a freeze or something, you just play emptiness and you just win. Um, because your opponent can't do anything like Big Eye or Drac of Sanctus Freeze. They have to try and power over it, which they can't do. And then you just start swinging your little weenie guys into whatever they have if they're walling up something in defense mode. That's the thing, is that if you Vanity with a Freeze up, even if they have something big that they can wall behind, or they already had something big they can wall behind, you can just start swinging weenie gustos into it, and this freeze will still make them take damage. So it's just it's it's a it's a very solid card for this deck. Two copies of Mirror Force, just to, you know, if you want to forcibly stop your opponent from doing things, um, like to, if they're exhausting your resources in your recruiter loop a little bit too thin, you can just Mirror Force and uh, just gain some extra ground back through your your contacts and your cams, things like that. Uh, one copy of Raigeki Break, uh, with the card cars, the upsets, and the things of the like nature, um, and the cam drawing. You can get hands where you're, uh, where you're having, like, a few too many of your Gustos in your hand, and normally the only way to get them out of your hand is to, like, set them or summon them in synchro with them. Raigeki Break just allows you an outlet to that. Being able to destroy cards on your opponent's field while getting dead cards out of your hand just to shuffle them back with cam or contact. Um, is very, very powerful, um, and the fact that this card is just amazing against established fields is also really good. Um, and then the last three traps are Bottomless, Torrential, and Warning. Um, this deck is just very trap-heavy. It's very, you know, it's streamlined to the point where it just wants to open a Recruiter or Thunder King and, like, three to four traps, and you will just ride those out to victory. That's basically how this deck tries to operate. Um, I don't have a finalized extra deck for this yet because I haven't really had the time to pick up the extra pieces that I'm missing. But pretty much the only important things that you need in the extra deck is like a Lightning Chidori because you have calls with the cams. Um, and then, you know, the Digusto Eagles, the two copies of Sfreeze, and the two copies of Goldos. Um, just to give you option. Um, because, you know, just things like that matter to some people. Um, and, you know, you would need, like, an Armadis in here. I've got it. I just don't feel like taking it out of the binder because I've just, I've been doing a lot of deck building recently, so all my stuff is just strewn everywhere else. But, like, these are the only, like, really important ones. Like, the deck doesn't really sync row for eight very efficiently, so, I mean, you could throw a Stardust in here or, like, a Crimson Blader because it has the option to, but it's not very efficient. Uh, Black Rose would be nice in here. Librarian would be nice in here. Um, just use your judgment. Like it's it's very it's very standard what you can make out of this extra deck. Um, honestly, the extra deck isn't really what's going to be winning you a lot of your games. It's going to be the fact that you like have recruiters that you're poking with while you're dealing with your opponent's monsters with traps. And occasionally, you'll drop like a Goldos or you'll drop a Freeze. That's about it. Everything else is. The entire deck is just basically just in your face, trying to you know do the weenie beats on you until until you uh, until you lose. But anyway, that's it for this deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I will be doing uh, some other videos gusto related sometime soon in the future um, once we get closer to the Pirica release. Um, ultimately, because I just, I'm kind of burnt out on Yu-Gi-Oh! right now. Um, you know, I'm just kind of sitting back, just messing with fun stuff. But anyway, as always, comment, rate, subscribe. Click an F if you have not. I'd greatly appreciate it. It helps me make money, and there's no reason to lie to you guys about that. Um, there's a link in the description to my Facebook fan page. Go to that page, like it if you have a Facebook, and you will get you will be able to see and receive updates of what I'm doing when I'm going on Dev Pro to play for videos. Um, when I'm, you know, posting, you know, a, some semi-relevant news or something that I'm really excited to talk about, or it's, you know, just even a way for you to message me easier and talk to me, and I may even switch completely over to uh, having only the people that are liking my uh, Facebook fan page be able to vote on what I play for the uh, for the Yu-Gi-Oh Pro marathons, because I may just put up, you know, voting posts on there so that it's a very accurate post of, uh, of just, what like, I'd put the comments on there, but then have the people there vote on what they want to see, because those are the people that are most connected with me. So do yourself a favor, go down in the description and like that Facebook fan page so that you can be better connected with what I'm up to. But other than that, 
Until next time, take care.